second lecture on linked lists, we'll take a look at the process of adding five names to a linked list, but also take a look at the Java code that we, we use to implement that and correlate that Java code to the memory map that we were exploring earlier. So to begin, we need to build a new list object. Ultimately, our intent is to add these five names, Adams, Jones, Miller, Smith, Wilson. We're going to add those five names to the linked list, but in the beginning, we have none, which means we need to capture null as a value in the list object. Let's take a look at program code to see how that's going to unfold. This is the program code I've made available to you. Here we are in main, and the very first thing we want to do is create a new list object. I want to step through and see how that behaves, so I'm going to set a breakpoint at a very early stage and begin execution. I arrive at this point. I'm going to step into now, when I step into, it's going to actually drive into what's called the class loader, and I will have to turn around and step back out again or return from, and that's fine. And I'll do this a few times until I get back to that line of code. There, I'm back here. Notice that the blue arrow is still on that line of code. I'm about halfway through the execution of that line, and this time when I step into again, I should arrive at the constructor for list. But I do. So here I am in class list. This is the constructor for, and I'm doing that one thing, the single most important thing for a list object. And that corresponds to setting the value null in here as an indicator that we're not yet pointing at anything because none of the five names has yet been added. Let's allow execution to continue. We come back. We finish that line of code. We're now about to insert a node at the front. I want to insert Adams. Well, I'll step in and we'll see where we go. We're going to start out by creating a new list node object. And after we create that new list node object, we'll capture its location information to head. Let's step in. Again, we're probably going to get into the class loader. And we did. We'll step back out again. We're back at that same line of code, halfway finished. Now, when I step in, I should arrive at the constructor, and it's the two-argument constructor. What am I sending in? Well, new data contains the integer value 36, which references the string called atoms. And head, head contains a null value, because it's the indicator that we haven't yet established anything in this list. So we'll step in. We arrive here at the list node constructor that matches, having received those two values. So object has 36 and RLN has null. And they're just going to be assigned into those two things. A bit redundant in the sense that next, which is what we're assigning here, already has null. But it's OK. Um, it's actually more efficient to do it this way rather than putting an if test in. And we'll step back out again. And we're done. So let's recap. Where are we? We are inside class list. And we are looking at this list object. This list object has one and only one instance variable, the head. The head now has an ID 43, and that 43 it is pointing at a node, and that node has some data. Let's come back to the memory map to make sure you see what's happened. We created the list object, bound the string object to it, and captured the address, this 17 over here. Of course, the numbers are different from my memory map compared to the Java code, because each time you run the program, you may end up with different kinds of ID numbers. The specific numbers don't matter. The fact that this number matches precisely this number, and that that number matches precisely that number, yes, that matters.
All right, back over here. We finished adding that first object. So when we come back, if we were to take a look at list, list is at location 35. It has as an instance variable head. Head has this value 43. When we take a look at 43, it has the 36. And the 36, when I slide this down, gives me access to all of the characters associated with the name Adams. Let's come back again and insert the next name. So my intent will be to add Jones. Oh, sorry, it's going to be printing first. I will allow it to do that printing operation. And yes, there you can see it printed out Adams. Now we'll do the insert at front for Jones. And I arrive. Same kind of process as before, but this time the ID that's coming in is 58. 58 is reference information giving me access to Jones. I turn right around and I'm going to create a new list node object. And in so doing, I've captured that new list node object to the head. Effectively, what I have done is this. Created the new object, captured the location information for atoms, and reassigned <laughs> that with the value from here And the linked list has now correctly added Jones. We'll come back to main, having just executed that. And very useful then to take a look at the list object. List object has as its head Jones. Next, Adams. Next, null. Oh, that's the end of the list. I'm going to step through now without going into each of them in detail by using step over, because my intent will be to add Miller, to add Smith, to add Wilson. Of course, each time after having done so, it will print and display on the screen down here. But let's see what happens. So when you look at the bottom of the screen in the console window, you can see that each time a request has been made to print, it's printed the list up until that point. If I come back up here and take a look at my list object, the head has the ID of Wilson. And indeed, Wilson was the first one in the list. The next one, ID 67. And inside 67 was Smith. Next one, Miller. Next one, Jones. Next one, Adams. Next one, Null. We've hit the end of the list. So that effectively corresponds to the process of having built the linked list by adding all of these objects and little by little binding these in. In order for you to understand linked lists and how linked lists behave, you need to get in the habit of drawing these memory maps because the memory maps are the only way you're going to be able to keep track of the creation of new objects and the insertion of new objects into the list. If you can own the concept of building a linked list with nodes, then it'll be so much easier for you to deal with more complex linked lists later on. And later on in the course, when we take a look at tree processing, trees will seem almost easy once you understand linked list. This is a very important topic, a very important concept. So I do encourage you to take a look at the code, bring the code into the debugger, and draw pictures, draw the memory maps to make sure you understand what's happening each time program execution is adding one of these.